I think the thing we need to look at, uh, Minister, is the mandatory retirement age. Like part of the reason why people are leaving the Defence Forces is because they know they're going to have to retire between 56 and 60. At that age, many people are just getting into their prime. I think a Deputy Durkin here beside me. Could you imagine if there was a requirement in politics that people had to retire between 56 or 60? We would lose some of the best wisdom we have in the House. So I think that needs to be looked at again, Minister, because if people are, know that they're going to have to retire at 56, they're going to start making plans for their careers in their 40s and we're going to lose great wisdom. Thanks. The image of Deputy Durkin being in the Defence Forces, I, I, um, uh, uh, while uh, absolutely um, the, the, the retirement age issues are, um, are something that we have been considering, uh, and as you know, and as Deputy Brady and others will know, uh, um, we managed to get agreement with the Department of, of Public Expenditure in terms of the post-97 contracts issue for the vast majority of people that have been impacted by that, and I, I hope to be able to conclude those discussions uh, uh, to ensure that everybody uh, uh, is accommodated uh, uh, in that regard. Um, um, and I think we'll continue to have that discussion. Uh, I mean, that's a discussion that's happening outside of the Defence Forces as well. But I do think we have to remind ourselves as well that you know, serving in the Defence Forces is different to, to other modes of employment. Uh, uh, if you're stationed in Mali or in Unifil uh, in southern Lebanon, or on the Golan Heights, or indeed any other part of the world on a peacekeeping mission, you know, physical fitness uh, is linked to age as well. So we need to be, um, uh, uh, to be cautious here, but of course also work with the representative bodies in the Defence Forces uh, uh, to ensure that the appropriate retirement age is, is being applied. Thanks, Minister.